everybody, welcome back to my channel. The fall vibes are real in my bedroom this evening. I am so, so excited that I have all these cozy elements around me because today we are doing our fifth episode of What Would Drew Do? Now, if you've never heard of my series, What Would Drew Do? It is basically where you guys can actually send me over your spaces and let me know what dilemma you have, whether it be the full space, a little area in it, paint color, design choices, whatever it is, you guys can send me that over to my email and I help you out in video form and share it with you guys to hopefully give you some tips and tricks for your own space. Now, I do want to also mention that today's video is so kindly sponsored by Helix. As a lot of you guys know, I've had my Helix mattress in my room for a long time, and I love, love, love my Helix mattress, and I'll touch on them in just a little bit. I printed out all of my details if you are wondering what I am looking at. On our first space was actually sent in by Lone Fox family member Claudia, and she says, here are a couple pictures of my bedroom. Um, we moved to North Atlanta in 2018, and as you can see from the pictures, the room is pretty plain. My style is more classic with some modern touches. I prefer neutrals with maybe a pop of color and overall a cozy yet stylish vibe and I'm open to any suggestions from the expert. Thank you first of all Claudia but I am no expert. I can only help with the knowledge I do hope I have today. Claudia also sent along a video that I want to share with you guys so let's roll that clip. Hi I was wondering if you could help me. We moved to this house three years ago and we have not much. As you can see it's pretty plain. We painted the walls a light gray but I was thinking maybe switch to a white color, maybe install picture frame molding in the wall. So hopefully um, you can help me style my bedroom. Thank you. And as you guys can see in her video, the first thing that she talks about is maybe regretting painting the wall color gray and also potentially adding some picture frame molding. And when I saw this room initially, I was like, that is exactly what this room needs. So I thousand percent agree with you, Claudia. I think painting the walls and the ceiling and just everything in this space white, along with adding that picture frame molding, will first of all give you a really pretty kind of Parisian aesthetic, but it also gives you just a clean slate that has detail to it as well. And I also think that picture molding will totally kind of mimic the the ceiling, the step up in the ceiling, and just the molding detail that's happening up there as well. I think that that will be a really beautiful touch. Still at the top of the room, I can see that there is currently a ceiling fan. Now, if at all possible, Claudia, I would definitely go in and change the ceiling fan to something more just design focused. So more of a pendant light, something that maybe even gives you more light, unless it's crucial. Like I understand some areas that are super, super hot need a ceiling fan. So if that's your area, for example, I totally suggest that. But if you can get away with adding a pendant light up there, something like this one perhaps, which is a little bit more modern, I know that she talked about liking modern, so kind of maybe mixing that French and modern element together would be a really nice touch. Moving her eye down to furniture level, I can see that Claudia has a nice big bed in this room, which is perfect, and it's also the perfect time for me to tell you guys about today's video sponsor, Helix. Over the past year on my channel, you guys have seen me use Helix mattresses countless times, and that's because the quality of them is truly incredible, and not to mention they come shipped in a box, which is very convenient. I just redid my friend Kelsey's apartment with the Helix mattress, and I also did my grandpa's space as well, which I knew that he needed a super comfortable mattress as he is getting older, but something that really helps out in determining a perfect mattress choice is the Helix sleep quiz. So you can actually input just some simple information based off of your position, kind of the feel of a mattress you normally tend to go for, the relief you're looking for and it will actually pair you with a mattress that is a perfect match for your body type. Now when I took my quiz a while back I was paired with the Midnight Lux mattress which I've had in my space for about eight months or so and it is the most comfortable mattress ever you guys. I have no intentions of changing it at all or ever as long as it lasts which I'm pretty sure it will because the Helix mattresses first of all are incredible incredible quality and the thing I really love about them is that they deliver the mattress to your door for free. It literally comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set it up yourself. As you guys can see here, this mattress is no match for me. It is very, very simple to unbox. Just let it air out for a couple of hours and then it's gonna be nice and fluffy and ready for you to sleep on, which is so nice. And something else that I love that Helix actually offers is a 100 day sleep trial. So if the mattress isn't for you, the return process is super simple and easy. They'll come pick it up and you don't even have to fit it back in the box, which is very key because that's the hard part, you know, putting it back in the box. And make sure to take advantage of my special discount, you guys. Head to helixsleep.com slash Drew Scott to get up to $200 off plus two free pillows. I don't think Claudia needs to change the orientation of this room at all. I think the bed is in a perfect spot. I think the nightstands are in a great spot. And I also think the dresser is in a great spot as well. And I normally am not the biggest fan of bedroom sets, but this one doesn't bother me too much. I think because it's white overall, it just kind of blends in a bit. And I do like the style of it. I think popping a couple of table lamps on each nightstand would be great to kind of balance out that area there. And then maybe just a little bit of a new restyle on the bed, a bit of a fluffier duvet, a couple additional throw pillows will just add a 
nice kind of lived in vibe to that space. In that back corner, I can see that there is currently an accent chair. It looks like it's like a white shearling accent chair, but I think this totally gives us reason to add a pop of color and just a new shape in the corner. So I found this beautiful rounded back velvet kind of light brown peachy-ish tone chair on Target. This is from their Studio McGee line and I just loved it so much. I think it's opportunity to add a new texture in the space, a new silhouette in the space, and it's also pretty affordable as well. So I'll link that below for you. The number one main thing I think that this room is missing though is an area rug. I think we need a grounding area rug at the end of the bed. It just seems like there is so much open empty floor space and this is also a great way to add in more color, more texture, and more visual interest. So definitely add a area rug to the end of the bed. And last but not least, just a little bit of dresser styling, maybe a basket on the right side of the dresser and a plant in the corner and that should finish off your new space, Claudia. So it went from this to this, which I think is totally beautiful. I love the outcome of it and I hope you do as well. Just a couple of minor tweaks can totally take your space from a little bland to something that is bold and beautiful. Our second space was sent in by Lone Fox family member Joanna and she actually sent over a video introducing herself and sharing the space. So let me share that with you guys. Hi Lone Fox home. Uh, my name is Joanna and I live in New York and here is the room that I need help with. So here is my um, unedited living room. There's my dog. She's wondering what I'm doing. It's pretty stark right now. There's nothing on the walls. We just moved here. We are desperately in need of like a new couch. The living room sort of leads right into the kitchen. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, I just wanted to show you the room, how we actually live in it. So um, any help would be greatly appreciated. Now, Joanna has such a great starting off point with her space, but I feel like she just needs a little bit of help with kind of pairing pieces together and coming up with a cohesive look for the space. So the first thing I want to change in here, you guys, is that boob light in the middle of the room. It is so small. I found this really cool kind of like abstract wooden chandelier online, and I thought that that would be a nice piece for this area and kind of tie back to some of the other changes I'm going to be making. So let's pop in that light. I can see that all the walls are currently like almost a light yellow tone. You can kind of see the difference between the ceiling and the wall. So I would say say if you were to go back in here and want a really kind of cohesive look in the end to go back and give a more neutral coat of paint I just feel like the light yellow color doesn't lend to anything that we're doing in this design so maybe a white or like a very very soft kind of neutrally gray or a neutrally beige tone would be a perfect base Joanna also mentioned that she wants to get a new sofa so I found her one online that I thought would be so comfortable I can just tell that their sofa currently now has so many throw pillows on it blankets they just like comfort in general so I found this super super fluffy sofa online and I loved it. It also comes in a dark gray color as I saw that she has a dog. So maybe that cream tone isn't perfect for her, but I wanted to implement it in the space just because it's great on that right wall. And then right above that, I think doing a gallery wall of some kind of vintage style prints would be nice. I found a selection off of Etsy and that's something I love about Etsy is you can actually find pre-made gallery walls. So I just popped it right above simple gallery wall. And I think the whole thing costs like 10 bucks for the entire collection of photos. On the back wall is currently Joanna's little work area, but I heard her say that she wants to to maximize the amount of seating. So I think moving her desk area over to the left side, more in the front, kind of on that angled wall under the window would actually give her a little bit of a window view and be a little bit more interesting than staring at a blank wall. I know Joanna talked about how she wanted to maximize the amount of seating she had. That way she's able to have more people over. So I do think adding a little accent chair over in that area where the desk currently was is a great way to add additional seating. And then also adding a large scale piece of art behind that. will just give the eye something to look at. That is a pretty large wall there. So so I think having something really, really big will be really eye-catching and bold. Working our way back over to the sofa area, we are going to need a coffee table, a rug, and a side table. So I picked out all three options. The rug is actually one from my website. I thought this one would pair perfectly in this space. It is so cute, you guys. And if you didn't know, I have so many incredible rugs over on Lone Fox, and they are such great prices as well. So I opted for this one. I thought it'd be really cute for this space. And I also added in a swivel side table, which is nice because you can actually raise it or lower it depending on what you want to use it for. And I just thought it would be a largish side table for the side of that sofa. And then in terms of a coffee table, I found one on Ikea. I thought a nice oblong oval shape would be nice to break up a lot of the square shapes from the media unit, the couch, and then also the focal um, accent. As far as the coffee table went, as far as, the, as far as, as far as the coffee, as far as the coffee table, as, 
As far as the coffee table went, I opted for an oblong kind of oval shape. I found this one on Ikea's website. The actual shelf in it has a woven kind of material on it, which I like. It adds a lot of texture to the space. And I know that she also talked about how she loves a lot of wood tones. So I really wanted to keep a lot of wood in this area. Now working our way to the left wall there where the TV is, I do think the TV is in a great spot. And I think the media console underneath adds some legs to that just to give it more of a media unit vibe. Currently it looks like a tipped over shelf that's kind of just on the wall. Whereas I do think if you add some legs to it, it'll give it more of a purpose as a furniture piece and just make it look a little bit more grounded in that area and thoughtful. And that is really everything I would do to the space. I love, love, love the outcome of it. And this is what the before looked like. And this guys is what the after looked like. I think this space just turned out incredible. And I actually love keeping that bike over there in the corner. I think it's just very New York and it just adds that kind of lofty industrial aesthetic, which I also love for this space. So Joanna, I hope that you love this living room design and maybe can implement some of it in your space in the future. Now our third space that I'm gonna be redesigning for you guys might be one where I am gonna lose some of you or some of you might love this design. It is definitely going to be a hit or miss, but I thought it would just be fun to include this. It is definitely a extreme design, so let's dive in. Now this bathroom space was sent in by Lone Fox family member, Nicole. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what she said. I really love your designs and I would really appreciate your help on our basement bathroom reno. It's a basement bathroom and the main bathroom that our guests use when they come over. We just bought this house and it is an old home with a lot of character, but the bathroom just isn't the nicest. It's also pretty large, but it's extremely dark and the ceilings are also low. Want some ideas to make this a cool space for our guests. So when I saw the photos of the space, I did notice that there are no windows in this bathroom, the ceilings are low, and the orientation of it is just so, so strange. So we are going to be converting this into what I call a hotel bathroom. I love when you go to those really, really cute boutique hotels or just really nice kind of boutique fancy restaurants restaurants and you go into the bathroom and they are so dark and moody and you almost feel just like a cozy vibe in there but it's just such a unique dark just elevated super bold wallpaper very graphic a lot of interesting details and that's what I wanted to do to this space is almost make it feel like one of those boutique hotels just funky unique bathrooms and some of you guys might be wondering why I'm doing that and that is just because when you have no window in a bathroom and it is dark in there the walls are painted yellow the orientation's a little bit strange there is only so much you can do to make it feel bright and more alive. And because there really is no window in here and the ceilings are low, we might as well play up the hotel bathroom aesthetic, you know, and just go for something fun and funky. The first thing we need to do in there, you guys, is cover up that old tile. It honestly is just not very cute. It's simple. Um, it also goes up the side of the wall, which is so strange. So I think covering this in just a peel and stick tile is a great option if you don't want to go in with some real tile. This is kind of like a simple retro tile pattern that I found on Amazon. I will link those below for you guys. Now to talk about the walls in the space, I can see that they are currently painted yellow and there are some beams in the ceiling as well. Something I would do in this space myself is cover every single part of the wall, everything except for the wood beams in some peel and stick wallpaper and something that is super, super bold, graphic and detailed. I'll pop up a couple of wallpaper examples for you guys because I used one in the bathroom that might not be your personal favorite style, but these are different styles of wallpaper that kind of lend to the style that I'm going for. So now we basically have some new tiled floors and an insanely graphic print on all the walls and the ceilings, but we do still have our wood beams, which I do love those. I think they add a little touch of rustic to the space, which I do like, but we're gonna work on the vanity area now. Now I do think the vanity can stay as is. It's a simple white vanity, but something I do think we can add above the vanity to elevate it is two sconces on either side of the mirror. So I found these great kind of round orb brass sconces on Amazon. They come in a set of two. And I think adding these to the left and right side of the mirror, even if you have to add puck lights to them and use like a little remote or something, and then to coordinate those lights back to the mirror, I actually really like the current mirror itself and the shape of it and just all of the detail. But I think if you went in with a little bit of rub and buff, which is something I did on an old frame of mine and just go in and kind of paint over the top of the mirror and give it a brass finish to match those lights, I think that's gonna also add a cohesive look. And I also feel like the brass metal over the top of the dark moody wallpaper is a really beautiful contrast because you kind of have that matte dark mood and then you have this kind of bright shiny brass over the top of it. And I think that that contrast is a really nice look. Currently the vanity hardware is pretty mundane and probably just came with the vanity. So if you were to add that brass hardware, it's just gonna make it again more thought out, cohesively integrating it back to the lights and also the gold mirror. When Nicole sent over the pictures, I did notice on the right wall, it looked like there was currently like a storage hutch, maybe like an Ikea storage hutch or something. But I do think we should relocate this to the right side of the vanity, just because when you walk in, because this bathroom is so large, we do wanna break up a little bit of that pattern there as well. There's gonna be a lot when you visually look straight ahead. So adding that black vanity on that wall as well, will just break up some of that pattern. You can also 
also coordinate back those brass handles that we added to the vanity onto that black piece as well. So they almost look like a matching set, but they still have their own um, kind of entity as their own pieces. Since we're on our brass kick here, we also do need to change the faucet. And I found this really angular faucet on Amazon that had a brass finish. I thought it was so pretty and would be a great option for this vanity. Now there's one detail that the rendering artist actually left out and it was on the wall that the cabinet used to be on. And that's just to add a really, really large arched floor length mirror because we're gonna have so much space over there. You might as well add a humongous mirror. It's gonna open up the space just a little bit more, give you a little bit more to look at. And I feel like also with that moody lighting in there that we have going on, it's gonna bounce around that light and just make it feel warm and cozy. So that is everything that I would do to Nicole's bathroom. And we took her bathroom from this to this, which I know is a super, super extreme change. And it's definitely not a change for everybody. This is a change for somebody that loves bold and interesting design. So I think if you want your guests to have an area that's kind of a conversation starting point, my other designs were pretty simple in terms of the overall look. They're bright and airy and just, you know, a little bit different than this more dark and moody bathroom. So I loved designing this space for Nicole. And guys, that finishes up our fifth episode of What Would Drew Do? So if you would like to submit your space for an episode of What Would Drew Do? I will have all the information in the description box below. You just head over to my website. It has all the details there, including the email that you could send your space photos and videos into. And I also want to thank Helix so much for sponsoring today's video. So if you guys do not have a mattress or if you're in the market for a new mattress, I highly, highly recommend Helix. And I will have all their information linked in the description box below. So that way you guys can have the best sleep of your life. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys.